Welcome to the Generation Show. The Generation team at M&B World is happy to greet you in the very first episode of 2020. During our first year, Generation introduced you to 20 great and goal-driven young people of Mongolia, and we will introduce you to many more interesting people. In today's episode, we introduce you to a young man who is one of the hundreds of volunteers dedicating his time and energy to safeguard children who are in desperate need of protection. Musul Taunchim studies at the National University of Mongolia. His dream is to protect our national interest on the global stage. For now, Mosul is protecting Mongolia's most vulnerable children from abuse and neglect through his volunteer work. Hello, uh, my name is Mosul. I'm 21 years old and I study at National University of Mongolia's International Relations and Public Administration and I'm senior this year. I just found my classes for today, so my free time is getting started and I volunteer at Lanton Tkha, non-government organization. We have a lot of things to do today and the rest of the week, so I'm just, I just need to prepare, prepare myself, so let's go to there. During weekdays, the National University of Mongolia area is busy and the hotspot for students. Mosul studies at a branch of the National University of Mongolia, namely the School of International Relations and Public Administrations. The School of International Relations and Public Administration was established in 1991 as a result of the Democratic Revolution in Mongolia. And since its establishment, the school has prepared numerous great diplomats in Mongolia. Mosul has been taking a bus every day for at least the last seven months to reach his destination Magic Mongolia 2, which is located at the easternmost point of Lambatr. Did you know there are over 14,000 volunteers in Mongolia? On an annual basis, they conduct almost 2 million hours of work free of charge, and it means that Mongolian volunteers contribute about 3.8 million Tugriks to the Mongolian economy. This is Magic Mongolia 2. This eye-catching complex and development center was built in the last seven months in a remote area of Bainzuk district of Ulaanbaatar. At minus 25 Celsius, over a hundred volunteers are working inside the building to bring protection and development opportunities to disadvantaged children in the Ulaasta area. When Magic Mongolia 2 becomes operational, it will provide a kindergarten with 150 beds. In other words, 150 children who are currently not attending any kindergarten and are possibly left at home with or without caregivers could spend their days in this safe and warm kindergarten. Other than the kindergarten, the center will serve about 3,000 children in this remote area, which currently lacks the opportunity to provide these kinds of services to children. The center will open a development opportunity for children and its library and protection center. Classes and training courses in ballet, dance, meditation and psychological advice will be conducted. There are also will be playgrounds and fields for sports activities. These are luxuries for children of remote areas of Ulaanbaatar, the capital city of Mongolia. This enormous project is solely financed by donations of supporters and the hard work of volunteers. Thanks to the support and donations, 
this 2.5 billion degrees project is being implemented and its construction is about 85% complete in just six months. Our guest Musult has been here since it was just an empty yard and well before construction began. All right, so we're at right now, Magic Mongolia 2, it's in Alaska. The construction work is happening right now, so so many people and the volunteers working right now. Everyone's trying to help it, and, and tomorrow is a construction open day, so that's why everyone's trying to make it like fully prepared for the people. So I've been a member for like two years, and it's going to be my third year. For about this project, like briefly introduction is, it's for it's all about like child harassment, child abuse against child harassment abuse. Every like every every piece of wall is 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 building to protect the children, giving them knowledge, protecting them. And every Mongolian people, every single people is helping. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a really big project. Did you know the Lantun Daho NGO was established in 2012 in order to protect children from violence, neglect, abuse, exploitation and human trafficking? Magic Mongolia 2 is its second child protection and development center that was built as part of the NGO's projects related to child protection. Thank you for your volunteer work here. Tell us a bit more about yourself. Where are you from? I grew up in Tahansi like since three years old. I lay with my mom and a brother, the younger brother, he's 11 years old. And uh, part of my hobby, I, I like to ride a horse and stay over here and play with those guys. You're a carrier volunteer now. Do you have any other work experiences? Uh, but work experience, uh, the first year, the freshman year, I was uh, the tour guide com. I was working at a tour guide company. I was guiding tours throughout like uh, Eight Lake, Oman Oranga, and Tirich National Park, like three times, like three days horse riding over there. Like that, I, that happened like three times. So you're a senior now. How did you choose your profession? Every every students that l studying it international relations, everyone, maybe everyone is thinking about they'll be diplomats. That's my first, like, aim, kind of like that, but actually, the first, second one is I want to travel. I want to travel all over the world, like, I want to see how the people's working, how they living, how they, like, managing things, how they solving problems. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Maybe it's because I've been in America, like, two times. I, like, I learned a lot from those from those people from that country. First of all, I really like history. I like to read history books. And from there, like, there's a lot of problems. Our ancestors, they were solving those problems. They were protecting Mongolia. That's really inspired me. Maybe that's why I chose to become a diplomat. You worked in the US. Tell us about your experience there. What was the most important thing you learned from the time you were in the US? First time when I was in America, it was like 2017 summertime. I was I was working at McDonald's, and f McDonald's work is really hard though. It's really hard. Like, really? yeah, it's really hard. Like, a lot of customers every time complaining that your new student is not so good, uh, kind of like that. Like, maybe it's because our English, like at that time, maybe that one. And there's a lot of problems. Like. 
McDonald's culture is totally different from our country. Like, especially for me, I've never been at a fast, fast, fast food restaurant, and like making a food, cooking, bagging, and taking orders. It was totally new for me, and I learned from I learned a lot from that culture. But those people's time management and hardworking skill, hardworking like. It's, it's really awesome. Like they they work so 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 awesome. Like uh, I know one manager. Like she will sleep only four hours in a day. And when she say to me like I didn't believe that. Like hey hey like they call me Rain and hey Rain. You know what? Like I work every day and I sleep only four hours in a day. And and the last sentence. The words she said to me was, you're a young guy, you have a lot of powers, you have a lot of uh, skills, maybe you have a lot of follow chances, and you have a very big future, so try hard. And that's why he said, maybe I was really, I was really bad for my, for my job, mm -hmm. but maybe that's why she just gave me advice. Is it true that Mongolians working in abroad stand out by their ability to learn fast? Yeah, we learn really fast. Like I've been working with Thailand, Vietnamese, and Filipinos, Filipinos, those people, those students. If I compare myself with those students and my Mongolian students, we're faster to learn things. We have a good Maybe, I don't know why, but we have really good skills to many things really fastly. Like when they're, the customers, like they, they say a problem to us, like Filipino, those students, like they will definitely gonna call manager and like until the manager, they, they won't say anything and like customers will be mad. But like for Mongolian students, they just try to solve it for themselves and many things really fastly. How did you become one of these volunteers who are nicknamed as the Magic Makers? You know, Ban Jokhlan, he came to our dormitory and introduced like new students policy to us and like they, he said to me like how to protect ourselves from home trafficking and how to protect our children, our I mean our brothers and sisters, little brothers and sisters, protect them from child abuse. and. I really like it, those his words, and and I asked from himself like, I really liked you, and are you? Do you need any members? I asked from him, and he said yes, and that's that's all for like for getting started. Kanjaksun Chadrapal is the founder of Lanton de Ho NGO. Years ago, he led his friends to surprise children in remote areas of Lambatar with New Year gifts. Then they found out that due to unemployment, poverty, and alcoholism, young children were neglected and abused in several ways and were at the risk of human trafficking. Volunteering for an event is one thing, but working for a goal and dedicating yourself to one project for three years is a whole different thing. Why do you volunteer for the Magic Mongolia project? It's a really big project, but the first of all, I really like the people that working over here they made me myself right now and like last three years they just taught me a lot of things we've been friends for years so that's why maybe that's why and second one is you know the magic mongolia it's a maybe it's the biggest project for child abuse or human trafficking in mongolia right now i mean like last 30 years they're building a really big the house right now yeah, so I want to part of this project. Like maybe 20 years later, someone will talk about it. Like this place protected me from my parents, my someone else who's who, who are trying to sell me, and someone made this beautiful house and and they protect me. Like so that's why maybe I just want to part of this project. What is your dream? My dream is to become really cool, not a good, a cool diplomat. Like cool diplomat, for, for me, cool diplomat is like, he knows a lot of things, he knows a lot of languages, 
and he can communicate with people really cool, and he can protect that his or her country's interests to others. What are you doing to fulfill your dream? To achieve my goal to become diplomat, right now I'm studying, and like even I'm working over here is is giving giving me a lot of knowledge, like how how the like normal people, normal citizens, they can strike against uh, child abuse for themselves without any government's help, and it's really good knowledge for. The young, silly guy for me. We're at Magic Mongolia too. Literal translation from Mongolian to English is a magic country. Do you believe in magic? Ah,、uh, yeah. Of course, I believe like there's a magic. The magic can be made by people, and it can pass through children. Yes, Magic Mongolia is a project done by ordinary people fighting against child abuse without help of the government. Nice definition, Musul. It's the year of a parliamentary election in Mongolia. How do you see the importance of this election? If we were living in Saudi Arabia, maybe we don't need to do that. But we're right now living in a democratic country. We we have a right to choose our leaders. We have a chance to choose our leaders, and we have a chance to tell them that they need to prove their words to people. And doesn't matter if we're young or if we don't know anything else. It doesn't matter because we have a lot of chances to choose our leaders. Choose our leaders is not so is not so like. It's not the common things in the world right now. What is your New Year's resolution?、Uh, first, I want to graduate my school, my university, successfully. And the second one is I want to see the, this magic Mongolia is is just got started to working and helping children. I just want to see that and children are like running all around over here, playing with each other, chasing after. In summer times, like. They like play with waters with each other, and yeah, I just wanna see that. As Magic Mongolia Two nears completion, magical brother and sister's help is needed more than at any other time. If the much-needed 250 million tourist donation is raised, Magic Mongolia Two could open its doors to children in May of 2020. By watching this episode of Generation and sharing this message, you too could become a magical brother or sister, just like our guest Musul. Musul Tawinchim contributes by his involvement in today's social issues, and tomorrow he will represent Mongolia at the international level. For all these hardworking and dedicated people, see you next time.